latest episode of Lifting the Lid. My name's Andy Ely. I'm a, um, I'm a senior funeral director at um, G. Seller Independent Funeral Directors, and we've been serving bereaved families since um, since 1910. Um, now, there's lots and lots. I'm sure we're all well aware. There's lots of different um, misconceptions, taboos, um, things that people aren't really sure as to what goes on behind closed doors within the funeral profession. So we've put together this series of podcasts to try and dispel some of those myths, answer any questions, um, and, uh, and of course give you a bit of an insight into it, to what actually does go on. So please do like, share and subscribe. Um, absolutely, please send us some emails to liftingthelid at gseller.co.uk and we'll do our absolute best to answer those questions. It, it really is our, our family looking after your family. Now today we're going to talk about cremation um, and uh, communal cremations is, is one of the questions we receive quite a lot. My colleague here, um, who is now my colleague, Lucy, used to actually work at a crematorium, so she's the perfect person to talk through what goes on at the crematorium. So Lucy, uh, hello. Hello. <laughs> you okay? Yes, are you? <laughs> Good, yeah, not too bad, thank you. So um, Lucy, so you, you work with me now at G Cellar. Yeah. So you've obviously got a bit of a, a bit of a background within the funeral profession. Could you t- how, how did we get here? What? Um, yeah, so I, I started in funerals three or four years ago, um, started as a driver bearer, sort of moved on to the operative, operative side of things. Um, and then from there, I then did go to work at the crematorium. Um, and then, yeah, joined sellers after that, G seller after that. So, yeah, so it was, I've had a little little bit of here, there and everywhere. <laughs> okay, a good overview, I think. So, <laughs> Try. For, from my perspective, a, a driver bear, I guess, would be um, considered a casual uh, G seller. So someone that predominantly um, carries out the, the, the ceremonial side. Of the yeah. funeral. You mentioned operative there, so that's a, that's a bit more of a behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, f- perhaps for another podcast, I, I, I think we're going yeah. to more detail about that. <laughs> um, so at the crematorium, um, what was your role? What did you do? Uh, so my role was I was the chapel attendant. Um, so I basically um, s- oversaw all the funerals coming in um, that day. Um, so I would look after all them. Um, I would have to check, make sure the chapel was clean after each service. Uh, you know, it, people need to come in and know that, you know, it's it's they think they're the only ones there and that's how it should be. So we would make sure each funeral um, it was cleaned between. Um, we would, I would check things like the coffin plate, um, take care of the music, um, help the directors if they need anything when they come in. So yeah, so genuinely oversee each funeral that came in uh, at the day. So kind of making sure that that chapel is ready to receive exactly. a family, yeah. a funeral director and of course yeah. someone's loved one. It needs to be seen as like nobody was there before yeah. everybody's is different you know and it needs to be set up because you know it needs to be set up like it was never used again and started again so yeah so you know we look after we looked after each funeral like that okay so yeah. i mean how, how long do you have to do this how, how long in between funeral services um so between the services we had sort of well it depends sometimes some ran on so it was a little bit quicker than others but it was still yeah. the same it was still the same care it was just a little bit quicker um but yeah we'd have sort of 10 minutes to have a bit of a turnaround if I needed to get the hoover out, we'd do it. We yeah, make sure there were no you know flower petals, things like that. Make sure it was all set okay. up, ready to go. Put the chairs back in line. You know things that probably you wouldn't think about um, before coming into a service, uh, which it isn't something to think about. But yeah, like I said, we set it up as if it was never used because the way it should be. Absolutely, oh brilliant. So I know from a funeral director's perspective, um, identification is very important to us. So at every single stage um, of a loved one's journey, we are checking the identification, making sure it's absolutely the person we're looking after, making sure everything contained within um, said coffin, any jewelry is recorded. Um, and then of course we seal the, um, seal the coffin and, and travel on to the crematorium. Now you mentioned checking the plate there, so I guess that, you know, that's part of that identification process carrying on. So what, what are you checking it against? Exactly, um, so what we would check it against, so when we got our paperwork we would either receive um, the paperwork from the coroner or what's called the green certificate, so this is when you register a loved one that would be the, the certificate you receive. And we would then be checking it on there, it's almost like, like our bible, like that is what it needs to match with because we don't see that person, we don't see the identification that you saw before you came. So that coffin plate on the top is is my my way of knowing the identity of that person, so I have to check it as exactly as it should be. Okay, so if there's a discrepancy, yes. 
So I know from the funeral director perspective, we check religiously everything against that green certificate yeah. you mentioned, the yeah. registrar certificate mm-hmm. for yeah. burial cremation. We make sure that is absolutely 100% correct. I can vouch that I do that. What happens if perhaps it doesn't happen and there is a discrepancy? So from the crematorium's perspective, yeah. what do you do? So yeah, so so like you, we, we do the same. That 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 is That is what we use, exactly the same. So... If, for example, there is a slight misspelling, so there's an extra there's an extra letter in somebody's name, for example, um, but we you know the age is right, the name is right, but there's an there's an extra L in in the last name when there should be one, there's okay. two. Um, so if the director is available, we would ask them to come in, sign the form, or if they're not available, we would contact the funeral director separately. Now that funeral can still go ahead. Uh, but behind the scenes while that service is taking place, what we're doing is um, getting some form of um, like paper that says, um, I can confirm it is this person, okay. this is a spelling mistake, and I am happy for that cremation to take place. And then from there, actually, the cremation would not take place until we have either had that signed or had it then from the funeral directors. Um, so until we know for definite that that is the case. And I know it's... It may seem silly for so much of just one extra letter, but it's so important. Absolutely. So we're kind of totally, we're signing a disclaimer to take ownership that exactly. yeah. it is absolutely fundamental exactly. to that individual. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about one. So that if say there is a huge discrepancy from yeah. crematorium's perspective, I mean you can quite rightly refuse for yeah. the commission to take place absolutely is that- yeah so if if for example um you know unfortunately um service came i went to check the coffin plate and it was the completely wrong name then absolutely yeah i could refuse you know as, as dignified as we would i would speak to the funeral director separately and just explain that unfortunately we can't we can't continue because to, from my point of view it is not that person Okay. So we can't go ahead. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Totally understand. Yeah. Now I mentioned about the the funeral director beforehand, um, ensuring um, everything is itemised within um, said coffin before mm-hmm. sealed. So I know we can have certain things. Uh, we can have cards, photographs, yeah. trinkets, and mm-hmm. so on. But there's certain things we can't have. Um, so I, I've got my list that is religiously in my head: glass, batteries, um, anything flammable. Yeah, so what what are the reasons for this? Why can't we? Yeah. So um, depending on what they are, it can it, it can break the cremators. Um, there's things so things such as uh, shoes. Shoes is one. Um, the okay. rubber on the soles um, they can basically melt and damage the cremator out at the bottom. They um, glass is another one. Uh, pacemakers is a massive, massive thing. I mean, I'm sure you know, but pacemakers is a huge thing. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It can actually, you know, if we want to get extreme and go into it, it can actually explode a cremator. Okay. Um, glass bottles, any anything that's like concealed, so like tins. Coconuts is one, funnily enough. So you can have a like I've I've known uh, to have, you know, different religions put a coconut in there. Yes. Now it can, um, but there has to be a hole drilled into it so there's no pressure because again that can that can affect it as well. So lots of lots of little things. It's anything like pressurized, like you know, tins of hairspray for example. Okay. Pressurized things like that. You can spray somebody's hair. You know, if you want to set their hair by all means, but you can't put the tin in there. So yeah, anything that's you know pressurized, no, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely. So I mean, again, from my perspective, I'll be thinking if you wanted a tin of beans, for example, I'd probably take the label off the tin of beans and place that. So it's kind yeah, of a bit of exactly. a representation. Yeah, yeah. So everything's okay as we arrive, um, and of course they we then convey into the chapel yes. and lay to rest on the catafalque. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I believe at the point at which we cross that threshold, um, said loved one is in the care of the crematorium. Absolutely. Rather yeah. than the care of. Um, yeah custodian us the funeral directors um we invite the family in get them seated and carry on with the funeral service and of course we tend to quite often have music at the crematorium Mm -hmm. or perhaps an organist um is that part of the chapel attendant's job to just make sure that's all okay and working i mean how does the music work um so yeah so when i was there i know there's different systems for different crematoriums so we used to work off what was called a wesley system uh, now what it used to be is um, I used to get like a like a music list and I used to manually actually each put them on for each service, check them and everything that I'd used to do this today before. Um, and then as time went on, it, it came that we were doing it automatically. So the funeral director could put that, confirm it, and it still would be automatically scheduled. Um, but we would still check. Like I'd still come in that morning, check against them, 
just just for my peace of mind anyway and then Absolutely. even then at the start when I've checked that plate or before I've even checked the plate I would ask the funeral director or whoever may be taking the service to come in and double check the music because there could have been a change last minute if I remember I could have gone oh do you know what I'm going to add this piece and I didn't want it but I want to it's all I've had it before where people have come in and gone oh do you know what I, I really I really wanted to add this and I, I was going to regret it but can you put it in and yep quickly as quick as anything we'll get in add it two seconds and it's it's done yeah so brilliant it, yeah it's all again checking making sure everything's right before everything starts absolutely so of course we um we carry on with the service there and now at the end of the service we've got the option of having curtains open closed I mean, that's, i guess that's quite a big um choice for the family yeah. it's a big question to ask yeah. so what are the differences between the two from from your perspective there um, i mean does anything happen to the to their loved one no no nothing so it, you i think a long long time ago i think it was a thing where um it would you you used to see uh, unfortunately that that loved one taken away and uh, it was it was quite an awful thing and I think a lot of people still sometimes think that if they don't go to funerals after I think they worry that's their one worry like oh I don't yeah. want to see it I don't yeah, but no is, yeah. whether those curtains are left open or they're closed um loved one is not moved until everybody's out of the room and I've said so or if there's a delay with anything and they want to spend a couple more minutes no until everybody's away no nothing happens and even at that point when everybody's away we still then close the curtains just for dignity yeah the absolutely. curtains close and and then loved ones taken away yeah. and of course if yeah. we're having the curtains open we could perhaps um, the family the immediate family could be the last to leave exactly. we can place items yeah. on on the coffin perhaps some flowers mm-hmm. uh, and so on so we've talked about uh, spoken about the, the the workings of the actual chapel so behind the scenes and I guess this is the this is the part that people want to know what happens there so we've spoken about identification I'm often asked is it my loved one that I get back oh yeah absolutely there's so there's so much um like we have to go through even so that identification thing so yes i've 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 checked that uh, coffin plate coming in checked everything on there um once that funeral service is finished loved one is then taken away it is then checked again so the crematorium um crematorium technician would then check the plate again even before the cremation takes place so if i've missed a discrepancy it then can be picked up again um so from there we have three different cards so you've got one card that will stay with them um that well all these cards are, in the end will be with their cremated remains but you've got one card that will essentially stay with them at that moment so the cremation then will take place he's, he's checked the plate cremation will take place and then there's almost like a little slot on the cremator that it gets kept in that then stays there for the whole of that cremation to take place um once the cremation is finished Mm-hmm. Um, and the cremated remains are then sorted as they are. Um, they then get put into like a temporary, almost like a temporary cardboard box. Okay. And inside that cardboard box is like a bag. And they, they used to be plastic, but they're actually paper now. That card then goes inside, and then we wait before anything's sealed. There's then somebody else, so myself or one of the other team that used to be there, we would then have to come and do a cremated remains check. Okay. So we would then have to check each number matched because everybody gets what's called a unique cremation number we need to check each card matches with each each stage basically and once we've signed and also the cremation technician has signed everything is then sealed so that card goes inside the bag is then sealed it then goes on the outside of the bag the top goes on and then there's stickers they are all the same so that there is a card kept in each one and then from that you then have also what's called a cremation certificate which also has the same um same cremation number they're all unique to everybody but it matches that person with their name and everything so it all everything is checked again two three times if it has to be i've i've done it before where i've gone out and gone no before you do that let me just check that again it doesn't hurt to check four or five times so yeah just to be sure Absolutely. So, yeah, the cremation certificate that you've spoken about there, if we were to lay that um, that loved one to rest elsewhere, mm-hmm. that, of course, is the paper trail. So we would need exactly. that document yeah. to, uh, you know, if we were going to a mm-hmm. cemetery or a churchyard. Yeah, Lucy, exactly. that's brilliant. Thank you. Hopefully that's kind of helped with people um, just to say that, you know, cremations aren't communal. Um, it is a real big thing, identification. We have to check everything constantly all the time. It's just ethical to do so. Um, but, yeah. Thanks, Lucy. She cleared up that really well. Um, 
as I say, um, that closes our episode um, for communal cremation. Um, thanks for listening. Um, as I said before, any questions, please email to liftingthelid at gcello.co.uk. Uh, please like, share and subscribe. And, uh, you know, we'll see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>